All right. Hello and welcome, everyone, uh, to the Friday show. You made it. Now, last Friday, we obviously didn't uh, have a show because we were at the Techno Security Conference all week. And Friday was uh, was my travel day. <laughs> There's no way I would have made it back. And doing a podcast live from me driving the car on the way back uh, it would end up horribly bad and uh, and pretty ugly and scared my wife terribly to death, which I do anyway driving. That's just the way it works. Anyway, hey, welcome to the Friday, you guys. You, you made it. Uh, welcome. Um, I'm curious if you're here, uh, say hi, uh, down into the chat. Uh, and I forgot to tell my two guests that we're in the, we we're having little issues in the, in the green room or the backstage area, whatever you want to call it, uh, of techno nerd stuff. You guys should be able to see comments and reactions to the live audience back in there. And then we have a private chat also. Yeah, we can, we can talk about people also in there is a private chat with just us <laughs> for back in there. If you guys uh, can see that in the, in the chat areas. Um, so there, there's our, our catch up from, from Green Room. How are you guys doing? It's, uh, can you guys believe it's like the middle of June already? It's literally, I'm looking at the date. It's the 14th and we're halfway through June. Uh, it seems like it's just now starting to warm up here in, in, in Northern Ohio, which it's not much, probably much different from where my, uh, my, my guests are at, uh, which we'll bring on here in, in just a second. But again, like I said, we were at Techno last week. Uh, that was absolutely awesome. Lots of fun. There, lots got to see um, uh, a lot of great people that I haven't seen. It's more of a family reunion for me than it is anything else. Just to see um, a lot of you guys were there uh, for that matter. Uh, came up and said how much you enjoy the uh, the nonsense that we we do here on the Hubcast every Friday. So I appreciate that. Uh, like I said, I just call it uh, the really bad late night talk show that we do in the middle of the day. Uh, that's really what we do is just try to have fun and connect as uh, digital investigators and try to sort this whole thing of of chaos that we that we do. So it's uh, much appreciated. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on my guest here. Hold on. Let me look at the, the right button here. Uh, all right, guys, no drinking or, all right, no, you're good. Anyway, <laughs> there you go, Tom, you can drink all you want. It's uh, it's you too. You cannot tell me I can't drink. They don't care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's nice stuff. If you, this is yeah. seven o'clock on a Friday. We're, we're drinking. Yeah, absolutely. I still have my coffee mug in front of me. So uh, that's how what my kind of day has been. I got to get you one of our, uh, next time I see you guys, both of you, I'm going to get you, uh, is this the plain one? Uh, this for being on the show. Oops, hold on. Um, I don't know if you've seen this uh, before, but it's a uh, not really a shot glass, but it's been converted into one. It's a 30 uh, millimeter round um, that's fired out of, if you've ever heard of our, hold on, what did I just do with that? I had that uh, thing. Uh, it's an A10 Warthog. Um, it's a close air support. Uh, oh, here it is. It's uh, let's it right here. Uh, I bent the card all up, but it's that aircraft. This shell was actually fired out of it, and we make shot glasses <laughs> out of it. And uh, I'll send you guys uh, these fun things. So then you can really drink properly on a Friday. How's that? Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I've, so, got a, I've got a 30 cal bullet that was converted into a bottle opener. When you go to the local pub and you open up a, a bottle with a 30 cal, yeah, it's uh, get people looking at you. Yeah. It's suspicious. Yeah. Yeah, especially over there where firearms aren't really all that common, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, hey, guys, hey, welcome to the show. I uh, I appreciate you guys uh, taking time out of your Friday evening to, to come on and, uh, and chat with me a little bit. Um, and, and to the chaos of really uh, the unscripted show that we just do, and we just uh, come on here and have a little bit of fun. Uh, so uh, welcome to the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, um, Liam and Tom, I'm going to let you guys kind of talk about yourselves just for a little bit. Introduce yourselves to our audience. And um, uh, Liam, I'm going to start with you, uh, if you don't mind. And just tell them who you are, what it is that you do. And uh, yeah, how you got started. I guess that's the more important thing, too, is how you got into this crazy uh, industry. Yeah, of course. Oh, well, thanks, Kevin. Uh, so I'm Liam Owens. I'm a doctor in AI, the geek, I guess, or one of the many geeks here at Stephen Warner. Um, so, uh, yeah, a little bit about me. So, CEO and founder of Semantics 21. Um, I've been the Trinity Tourist all my life. I, I was a massive CSI geek. I love CSI. Everything that they made 
possible drop a phone on a table and suddenly everything gets extracted that's what i wanted to do uh, all that kind of sexy kind of forensics that that was the big thing um so undergraduate degree in digital forensics um during that time i had the privilege of working in one of the greatest uh, forces here in the uk the staffshire police um loved it loved what they do they're a team of wonderful people just like all the investigators were absolutely phenomenal uh and you know uh, i i from there, I was offered to do my PhD in bypass my master's, become a, a doctor specialising in, in digital forensics and artificial intelligence, which was really novel, new at the time. So completely uncharted territory back in 2009 through 2014 when I did my PhD uh, and taught digital forensics at Staff Uni at the time, loved it. Uh, I walk, walk around working with staffs and different forces. One thing that came about there was um, being exposed to all this fantastic research of, you know, facial recognition, image comparison, all this wonderful AI that we now see more every day, but over there was still sort of very, very new, not really out there. But nothing was getting into forensics, and that frustrated me because you've got heroes across the world doing the most difficult jobs in the world or some of the most difficult jobs in the world, definitely. And they didn't get helped by all this fantastic AI that was going out to all the big boxes in terms of, you know, commercialization for you know, cars and, you know, shopping, etc. Sure. So I really wanted to, to, to help there. So uh, I created Semantics 21. Um, and the aim was to bring the forces, well, two things, bring forces to the 21st century, hence the 21. Uh, and also to bridge what we call the semantic gap. So I'm a geek. Hopefully the geeks understand that know what I'm on about. But it's a terminator effect. You know, what separates us from the machines? The abilities that we as humans can can learn and can adapt without having pre-knowledge by just simply, you know, experiencing and by that experience being able to make decisions on our own and make things better. So by bridging that semantic gap and then bringing forces to 21st century. But the crucial aim for me really is uh, to do what we can to tackle child abuse. Um, and that's really the big focus of, of S21. Um, so we started S21 in 2015, and it's just strength to strength, and we love working with all the people out there. It's just, it's a dream come true to work with amazing people doing amazing work. So that, that's really about me. I don't want it to be about me. Um, and, and great team here doing phenomenal work, and we're just proud to help, really proud to help and do everything we can. That's uh, that's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. Um, Megan is noticing, hang on, let me, uh, let me publish this view here real quick. There you go. So we can bring the chat up onto the screen. Oh, she, she noticed, yeah. uh, it, we're all nerds. So we all notice the, the nerdy little things that are hiding in somebody's background. Yeah. And if, uh, if, uh, yeah, you can kind of see it back there. <laughs> Thank you. There is, there is actually the shining as well. Just that way, just above my shoulder, you got Johnny Depp and not Johnny Depp, Christ, uh, Jack Nicholson in the shining just below as well. Oh, no uh, kidding. The, Here's Johnny, yeah, the little white uh, head there, that, that's what it is. So, yeah, I'm yeah. a bit of a geek. I can only apologize. It's just a bit of a geek all, all the way there. Yeah, I mean, hang on. I just got to step aside a second. There's no really, I mean, there's, uh, there's light <laughs> lightsabers for crying out loud that are that are hiding back there in the background. Uh, so that's what it is. I think uh, I think Tom had a, uh, a jump stage moment. We call that in the rock band world, he went stage diving. Um, so he'll be back here in just a second, I'm sure. At some point, come back. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. Oh, great. We got some people here from uh, from Arizona, and uh, yeah, there you go. All right. I wonder if we have anyone. Is anyone actually joined us from anywhere else than the U.S. other than uh, yourself? I wonder. Uh, we'll give them a second. Now, the challenges with this is um, we're on about a fifteen second delay. And that really does nothing for us. We can't, it's not like we could beep out if I, we start on a swear tangent or, uh, or anything like that. Um, but, uh, so we do ask a question. We just have to wait a few seconds to, uh, to pop in there. Hey, there he is. We thought we, uh, we lost you and you just decided, forget this. The show's too boring. I'm going to go drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I've heard Liam talk so many times. I don't need to watch this again. No, I, I'm totally. <laughs> Yeah, you said the weather's the weather's picking up where you are. I'm currently in, in Nottingham, which is in the middle of, of England, and we have had the worst summer so far. And we are literally on the edge of a storm that's just taken out the whole of the the internet for the house. So the kids are downstairs. I can shout. They're going. The Xbox has just gone off. I know something's gone wrong. My broadband dies. So yeah, I apologise about that. We should be good. 
No worries. That's the um, joys of doing a live show. It's just uh, you never just know what's going to happen. That's part of the fun. I know. Yeah, I've now got the sun coming out, so I've got the sun coming through a window, and I'm like, this is really, yeah, very difficult. So in England, yeah, it's like, like vampire. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The sun. <laughs> this is really nice. Yeah, I'm going to tell whilst I'm talking to you guys. So. Uh, yeah, I assume you've asked Liam who he who he is, and uh, yeah, he's, he's geeked you out. Um, I'm nowhere near as geeky as Liam. Um, yeah, my background is is in policing, so I was a police sergeant at uh, Nottingham Police for 17 years. Uh, I run a high tech crime unit, so we always used to say if uh, if your seized evidence had a battery or a cable or a plug connected to it, it was my team that investigated it. Um, so we had the free reign to do whatever we wanted. So we, we detected things like um, Cellbrite before they were creating a Cellbrite kit downloading phones. We realized mm -hmm. in the commercial space, you could buy a new phone and could plug a phone into a box and extract the data and put it onto a new phone. And uh, we thought that's quite cool. Uh, policing could benefit from that. So spent a lot of time back with engineering other people's kit to, to really push forensics on. Um, always been a massive Apple fan, so uh, left policing in 2017 to work for Black Bag Technologies, uh, obviously based down in California. Um, loved working with those guys, did lots of traveling, was part of their sales team. Um, and they were acquired by Cellbrite, so worked for Cellbrite. Um, again, very sales based, um, but I've known Liam for, for many years, and I like the mission of what Semantics 21 are trying to do. So it was kind of right, let's leave the traditional sales role at a sell bright company. Um, great guys there, but let's go and try something else and see if we can elevate our tools to get them into the hands of investigators. Uh, it's the area I think forensics has probably been a bit stale in the past. Um, probably the most important crime to investigate. It's the hardest, but most rewarding. So uh, we've got some tools that we wanted to, to get into the hands of investigators to help them. So yeah, I'm definitely more cop than sales. Uh, and like I say, definitely not as geeky as Liam and the rest of the engineers here. <laughs> he is. He, 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 if he wasn't before, he is now, I promise. Definitely. <laughs> you're, you're slowly converting him over? Yeah, that's all. Uh, yeah. I, I learned my lesson, Kevin, when you sit in some of the calls, the developers and the, the team, and you'd say, okay, just explain to me how does that work? And then three hours later, having a math lesson and a science lesson, I'm like, I'm not going to ask again. Just, just show me the product at the end. Just, I need to just draw me a picture of what's happening. Don't don't tell me the maths. Yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, don't don't ask ever developers those kind of questions. <laughs> those are right. he, but then Tom goes the other way, and he said that he's he's like he has these dreams, and he wants these dreams to come true. So he'll Monday's the worst day for it. Tom will come in on Monday and be like, I've had two or three full days of dreams, and now this is what I want, and this is how I envision it working. Don't know how it's going to work. But you make it work, and it's a great challenge to have, and we love it. Yeah, it's awesome. Love it. Yeah, it's great. As long, long as his dreams are on the technology side of things, you should be fine in those meetings then, right? <laughs> nothing nothing too off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk about those on a live webinar. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, definitely. I don't want to strike against uh, me from YouTube. We, we haven't got one yet. Uh, and uh, hopefully, hopefully after this one, we don't get any as well. So that'd be great. <laughs> oh, hey, I forgot to tell everybody also uh, in, uh, in my intro is we typically broadcast out onto three separate net or four separate networks. I'm sorry, all simultaneous, which we're back to that. We couldn't do that while we were at Techno last week. Uh, just so the Internet connection was really poor in, in the in the conference hall. But we're broadcasting out to YouTube to LinkedIn, to Facebook, and to Twitter slash X, depending on if you ever refuse to call it X or whatever it is that it is. Um, but we're broadcasting out to all of those currently. Now, we can see chats when they come in from, from YouTube. I saw one the other day from X. I don't know how it happened. I didn't think we had that type of integration. But we can also see Facebook. Sorry, LinkedIn. Uh, tell Microsoft to open their API and we'd be able to see those chats. But they're not, uh, they're not doing it. Yeah, and Megan even refuses to, to call it X. Uh, she's just like, I'm not doing it. No way. Uh, so that's where we're uh, broadcasting out. So if you guys have a question for these guys anywhere through the conversation as we get into it, please, by all means, just drop it into, uh, into chat. And uh, I'll scour the other ones if, uh, if they don't make it in. And uh, I'll get them to you guys so you can answer uh, those questions that might come in. Um, so, hey, I was, I was perusing the website the other day. Um, I love the style that you guys have on it and uh, 
uh, with the, the the little kid with the cape running on the on the very first page. That's pretty awesome. Um, what you guys have done with that, because and to me, obviously, I used to. This was you know I started digital forensics back in two thousand and two or two thousand one, something like that. And um, you know that was probably ninety eight percent of our our ish our, our was dealing with CSAM type material. Um, and you guys have made this so much easier to deal with and you've seen the trends over the years, um, as, as where things are going and, uh, what do you, what do you guys see as some of the top challenges or, um, you know, the trends in the industry, uh, that you're seeing come up, um, pr- preferably here in the near future, do you see anything uh, that's coming up or any challenges that the industry faces right now? Uh, Tom, do you want to go first or? Yeah, the, uh, kind of, yeah, I think the, the biggest trend we're seeing is, is just the sheer volume. Um, yeah. I think we, we even look at Apple with their latest advertisements. They want everyone to use cloud storage, use your, your iCloud drives. Um, therefore, they don't want you to delete anything. So we're, as devices continue to take more pictures, better quality pictures, we're going to look at 3D with now vision becoming a big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it is sheer volume. And I think we talk to cops now, and they're saying my investigation a few years ago it was, it was 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 images. You're not getting to the millions and three, four, five million. We've had cases this week, 13 million images that need to be reviewed for an investigation. And that's just a, it's unmanageable for a lot of police agencies. And then when they say to the poor investigator, hey, you sit there and you look at page one and you scroll through all those images. And when you get to the end, you're done. Um, it's unrealistic. Um, one, you're going to burn your staff out. Um, it's definitely not an intelligent way of reviewing digital media. So, so volumes is always going to continue to grow. Um, now, luckily, the technology has improved. And I know everyone's going to be sick and tired of everyone banding around AI. Um, it, it's been a thing now for a few months, years, where everyone's saying everyone's got AI, every product has AI. But it's true. Um, the AI isn't going to replace a human. Let's get that right. But the human that uses AI will replace the human that doesn't use AI Mm. um, because it's there to make you more efficient. So to deal with volume, we have to use clever search technology and artificial intelligence is that. And it's a filtering technology. That's how we've designed it uh, to look for various different objects from white collar crime to CSAM. Um, I mean, our AI can detect about 70 or 80,000 different objects. So it's considerably uh, bigger than what most of the tools even consider using. Um, and that's the way you've got to go. So we know volume is going to be a problem. And then obviously within the CSAM world, we know the biggest issue is, is artificial uh, generated synthetic media, um, where we're now seeing um, not only the AI generating material, that some people may have this notion that a, a child of a, a being generated by an AI, there's no true victim. Well, the, the AI had to learn from something. There, there was a victim when the AI was learning. Mm. Um, we know most defenders, when they start at the level of viewing material, they will go on hands-on abuse. The, the statistics are, are quite alarming how many people that have viewed you go on to, to hands-on. So that isn't going to be a fix. Um, we're seeing more cases pretty much every week where investigators are finding children uh, in their digital media that are in a CSAM um, environment where they look like they're being abused. They do their investigation, they manage to locate the child, and then they, they find out the child has never actually been abused. Uh, their face has been deep faked onto to see some material. So I think a lot of police agencies have seen AI to be a, a danger that there'll be a huge explosion to see some for them to review. Yes, there is. But now your difficulty of finding a victim it is, is really going to be difficult because you're going to find these children, but they've, they've never been actually hands-on abused. Um, just someone stole our identity. And again, I think a lot of police agencies don't realize that's happening, and it is. Um, so, yeah, we now have to not only find the material, locate the victim, but then actually make sure that the material is genuine, um, which is going to cause some challenges with the type of work that the cops are investigating. So there are two, there are two big challenges we're seeing. Um, I don't know, Liam, if you could, if you have a different sort of look on it from the tech side. No, I, I agree. I think, um, yeah, the tech side, there's always challenges. There's, there's more media, there's more complexity in media, there's more codecs out there now. So there's always things we need to think about. And then 
the whole you know processing there's definitely a lot of technical challenges out there and i think the the bringing meaning to, to, to data is important the semantic side of it is understanding what's going on in an image you know because that's going to help us get through the, the amount i think for me one of the biggest concerns i have is tom's absolutely right this mountain of csim this mountain of media as well not just csam but just the, the whole noise mm-hmm. around it means it takes longer so that means that there has to be knockback in terms of where does someone find the time and the money then to be able to find the CSAM? And my real concern is the victim ID in terms of rescue natural victims. And for me, it's like another set of heroes, firefighters. They're not there to fight the smoke. They're there to obviously fight the fires. I hope they use that right. Um, because of the time it's taken now to get through such amounts of media, some forces are finding there's a lot of pressure to go for possession charges only. And sometimes shackles the investigator or stops the investigator from maybe doing what they always want to do, which is to find the kid and to find the suspect. And that's the one that really worries me. As we see media get more and more, the costings, the time, the pressure, there still needs to be the, we did so many cases, whatever else. And I think sometimes there's the real challenge for investigators to say, no, guys, there's victims. I want to find the victims. Um, So I think the challenge for us technically is how can we try and automate victim ID, not only to find CSAM, but to really find, you know, try and do a job as good as an investigator, which is never going to be as good as an investigator. But what can we do to, as Tom said, be an investigator who uses AI, not just to find the CSAM, but to find in that victim and to also find that suspect when we talk outside of I think, yeah, there's definitely loads of technical challenges there, but my concern for me, the biggest challenge is how do we give enough time back to investigators so that they can spend the time they really want to find that victim? That's that's what I really want us to do as a company, to, 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 to find more kids. Um, that, that's what I really want to do. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And and to hit on both of your points here, just a second, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move over to Tom's point first is when I was doing these types of investigations, and, and this also combines with what you just said, Liam, I mean, it was th- thousands, I mean, tens of thousands of images. And this was, you know, early 2000s, mid 2000s, I was doing this. And it was just like, oh my gosh, there's so many. Um, and it's just, you know, number one, it's a toll on the investigator because you have to see this. And, and I didn't have kids at the time. Now that I have kids, there's no way I could do this type of investigation ever uh, again. I just couldn't do it. Um, but, um, you know, it's just a, a big time suck, but then now to, to throw in the, the twist of, Hey, is this created from AI? That's not something ever I had to deal with. Um, is this legitimate? Can we find this? And then how are, uh, obviously it, it, it's varies depending on jurisdiction of how are they combating that type of, uh, of scenario? I'd be interested to hear if you guys have any hands-on or at least been in, in touch with your clients of how they're dealing with that specifically. Yeah, it's a tough I mean, one. Like, yeah. Sorry, Tom, go ahead. Yeah. So you say it, it depends what you're dealing with. I like, say the legislation in different countries to, to say if it's AI generated and we can say, yes, it is AI generated, can they still charge uh, at the same level as if it was a real photo of a child being abused? And I think the standpoint everyone has to take all legislators have to take is that image depicts depicts a child being sexually abused for Mm. the purpose of sexual gratification for the offender that's it that that's put a line under it don't worry if there's a child there that's been abused because we do know that the AI models have had to learn from csam material if we even try and blur the lines between between treating an ai generated material as a lesser offense we are causing a huge problem worldwide. And that that definitely needs to not happen. I think a lot of the charity groups we work with, the, the tech firms, the big tech firms, I know as a, as a cop, um, when I dealt with the tech firms, I would have said they were the devil and they were the worst thing in the world. We now, well, I've now seen the other side. We work with the tech firms. They're doing a lot of good work. And their, their problem is they have a mammoth task to deal with. And they don't have technology that was already designed when it, did, when it first was created to deal with the, the, the dangers of what humans are creating. They never really created Facebook, for instance, because they thought people were sharing these things as the kids. It was never designed that way, but they are doing the best they can. And, and uh, there's a lot of criticism goes to tech industries, but trust me, having seen it from this side, 
they're working as hard as they can and they can always do things better i take it um but we need to definitely say as an industry it's not acceptable we need to as countries say it's not acceptable and um, we need to uh, stop it from being circulated so luckily most legislators are on the same page uh, in the uk we've been very lucky our legislation's always accounted for it uh, most of the us is, is fine you shouldn't have a problem north america's fine um, but it's those, those countries where they're a little bit slow to pick up legislation changes or the legislation was was created poorly in the first place um, but i hope everyone will 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 do the right thing and if the tech firms are on the side of us and they believe it's the wrong thing get it off your platform as quickly as possible we don't care if it's ai generated or not it's the wrong thing to be circulating so i think if we just keep keep it simple it is probably my message yeah wh whether it's real or not it's uh, here's, here's my opinion i don't care if people hate or what it's just sick you're something's wrong with your brain there you go i'm just gonna say it because i can't <laughs> there, there's something wrong there and that needs to be addressed. Absolutely. hundred percent. Never, never understood it. Never will. And those are my favorite types of arrests to make were, were those, uh, sick, uh, bastards. I'll just say it. <laughs> there's no sympathy yeah. for it. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. Uh, I think as well, we said within policing, it is the hardest job in policing. I've done mm -hmm. body recovery, surveillance, firearms, everything you do, it has its challenge, but to review CSAM, Totally different ball game. Yep. Um, and people that do it, I take my hat off to you. You, you, you are amazing. Um, but it is, we do it and we've done it and other people do it because they want to rescue the children. That's the most rewarding part. And to Absolutely. get these sickos out of our communities and protect people, yeah, that, that's that's why it's the best job. I do it for free. Um, it, it definitely is that rewarding. Yeah. We worked for government. We practically did it for free as it was. So that's just the way it worked. <laughs> right. Uh, hey, I have a question here. Now, we, we, I, we created some questions for you guys and stuff I was curious about since the, uh, you know, creation of the company you said about, was it 15 years ago, Liam? Is that what you had said? Oh, no, no, not quite that long. It's only eight years. Oh, eight, eight years. years. Sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, I look old, but yeah. <laughs> it's working with Tom. That's that's done it to you. I, oh, I, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Have you see yeah. his gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> At least you've got hair, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys? Uh, every company has a, kind of a great proud moment. Um, uh, something that they've helped. A case maybe that you've you've helped solve. Um, I'm giving you some time to think about it as I lead into the question. <laughs> To give you guys a little bit to clue in because I know you guys you know you a chance to review these things. Um, do you guys have a, a story top of mind of what a proud moment uh, you guys have maybe had as part of uh, Semantix Twenty One? Um, I'll let Lee, I'll, I'll call on Liam first. That way uh, we don't talk over each other. I've, I've got so many. Um, uh, every time we get an email or a phone call from someone who just took a moment out of their day to say that they help save someone. Um, we we were training in Halifax only three weeks ago, mm. and we trained an officer who uh, took the course on the Friday, and on the, the Monday they went back and they found a victim over a, a cross-border case with America that they hadn't been able to find, and they just said it was just something they learned on that course that just made that different. And to be fair with you, uh, uh, we, we, we literally fly, we teach, then fly, teach. We, we don't spend any more than a day anywhere, pretty much, mm. to make sure we can get around all these amazing places. Um, and we were we were really hanging, I think. We, we were we were hanging at that time. We were kind of like, it's the, the flights have got us. Um, so anything like that, and the, 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 the buzz it creates is, is unreal. Um, yeah, there's, there's 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 one moment in particular. Um, I don't know if I can name the force, um, but I think anyone who's listening, certainly in Canada, will know what I'm on about. Um, there was a, a a really old school user with us, and I say old school. We, we, I think they were the third uh, organization in Canada to ever take our software on, and uh, they're still with us now. They do an amazing job, and they were saying about you know uh, this investigator and it. I think that's important as well. I want to make this point. The software doesn't do it. Okay, we we, we do what we can. You know, the mm -hmm. software is there as a, as a tool in the job, but the real hero, and, and that's why we do it everywhere. The hero is the investigator that sits behind that keyboard and makes that decision to click that button 
and makes that decision to use the software and makes that decision to think something's not right. Mm. So I really, it's not about us. It's about, I want to give it back. It's the investigation. This is an example of one of those stories. They, um, they had a case where there was unknown victims at that time and during the case they managed to identify I think it was 17 or so victims um, uh, I think it went to 34 I think it went more than that and uh, they they actually personally reached out to each of the different victims to, to help those victims and one of them was was you know had a horrible time they were near well near suicidal we're told um, and that investigator helped them uh, picked them up, helped them get back to school, etc. And that was just amazing. We we got to I got the, the proud moment to go and hear it being spoken at the strategy meetings and that just brings tears to your eyes. To but but again that's not about us, but to know that we were a small part to help support that is just for me it's everything. Right. Um, it really is everything. So right. I mean we're really looking one Queen's Award, one King's Award a few weeks ago. Uh wow. And they're a huge honours. I, you know, I really do appreciate. I honestly do really do appreciate that. And it's just immense. And it's immense for the team as a pickup. But to hear the effect we're having or giving some tools to help is, like I say, I don't want to cry now, but it, it, it just it makes it unbelievably worth it. It right, really does. Right. I, yeah. So that that would be for me. I think that, that hearing what was said there and, and listening to the story from their managers managers level explain that story in a lot more detail was just unreal so congrats to them you know it really was phenomenal yeah that's amazing can you um for us rebellious colonists over here can you explain what the kings or queen of world is um oh, apologies. Ex ex exactly yeah. what that is of course uh, so her late majesty uh, queen elizabeth uh she set up um what's called the queen's award uh in 19 oh god i'm gonna get the wrong now in history, she set it up, um, <laughs> and um, uh, every year they elect uh, a, a small number of businesses to be recognised by uh, the royal household, Her Majesty, and of course His Majesty now, uh, King Charles, um, in different fields. Uh, there's different fields like uh, uh, sustainable development, uh, there's innovation, which is what we want, uh, so for innovation in digital forensics and for uh, Obviously, we're helping to rescue children, um, and there's other other categories, about four or five categories, um, and uh, yes, we, we we were given the Queen's Award in 2019, an unbelievable honour, a company of our size to be recognised by um, our, our Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who referred us to um, sorry, Theresa May. Apologies, uh, apologies, um, Miss May. Uh, to uh, put us forward to the Queen's Award and then um, our PM Richie Sunak uh, a few weeks ago put us forward or a few months ago and we were awarded the King's Award so it's it's um, I would probably say it's the highest honour a business can, can receive here in the UK um, it's 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 unbelievable so we're, we're to win it once was kind of like a bit of a pinch me moment to, to, right. to be awarded is a huge honor and uh if, if, the, if his majesty is listening to this maybe he is uh you know we thank you so much it is an honor and it's not to serve our country and to serve the other countries we're working that's what we're here for we really yeah. do appreciate it yeah ev so everyone you. appreciates you guys uh, i'll just let you know in advance you make uh life on the investigator a lot easier and we're going to talk about some of those ways that you can do that uh, as well but i want to hear from tom and tom i don't know if you have um you know a uh, a moment that you can remember that uh is something that you're proud of in the in the history of the company i think lynn's right i think we, we get through so many cases that the training calls we did, did recently pretty much every few days we were getting getting feedback where people say the thing you just showed me i've just done a case again i've found additional uh, victims We've got Operation Maverick here by one of the Midlands forces. Um, I think they're now up to 75, if I'm not wrong, victims that they've used the software to locate um, to the extent where our software has tags. So you tag your victims. And when we were reviewing the case with them to say, OK, how are you using the software? It's great you've got these victims. But we never even encountered, we didn't really think that the case you'd get to 75 to 100 victims. So we had to make changes to the software literally the same day that we found out these problems existed to say we can make tagging even better and easier for you because of the this, this sheer volume um and it is literally having worked in a previous industry or a previous competitor where 
salaries are very good to, to come here. We're a lot smaller and salaries are a lot less. I don't work here for money. I, I work here because I like the job we do. Um, and it's all about how do we make the software better to get those better results. Um, to the, the extent that we have a school based lookup uh, tool, so you can describe a school badge that may be seen in one of your pictures. Uh, and we'll tell you which school that's come from for the England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland, and the whole of Canada. Um, we even have people that aren't our customers. They'll say, I've got a case. I know I'm being really, really cheeky, but can you help me? And we'll say, yeah, of course, of course we will. We want to help anyone. It doesn't matter if you're a customer or not. Mm -hmm. um, describe the badge, and we can send the details back and say that's the school that we believe your victim goes to. And then, sure enough, we get emails a couple of days later saying the child's been rescued. Uh, we've taken positive action against the offender. So, again, we're there to help. We're not we're not here to to make cash. Cash kind of comes as a second thing, even though my sale my title is sales, which is a bit odd. Um, but literally, Kevin, it is every week we have really good positive cases coming back. That's amazing. That's awesome what you guys are doing. Again, kudos to you. Um, for that. And I know uh, if there's investigators listening either live or they're, they're watching it in post and after it's, it's aired, this episode is that, um, you know, uh, it's hard to explain to non-investigators the challenges that you go through, to go through as an investigator, having to see that those types of, of things in, in the image. And I know you guys have a lot of great technology built into your tool, but before we go into that, um, I have to ask Liam a question. Um, did you watch the, um, uh, um, the Halo series that was on. I, I did. Okay. I, I did. I'm so pleased you brought this up because I've been waiting for someone else to have watched it. Uh, <laughs> wow. Thank you. Yeah. yeah what did I you did. think? Uh, no, here, here's, I'm going to give you my overall opinion. Season one was freaking awesome. Season two, I think they hired new writers because of, I don't know, strike. I don't know what happened, but uh, towards the end of season two was, was, it had gotten better. But I actually fell asleep during part of a couple of season two episodes, and that never happens. I'm a sci-fi nerd through and through. Uh, what were your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean the opening the opening episode is phenomenal. To watch it from mm. a gamer's view from all those years ago, uh, you know that that was that was just unbelievable. The first episode really hit out. The, the whole season was was good. It went up and down. I agree. Season two was a little bit of a letdown for Halo, um, but I think they put stuff in line four, three, and four to be really good. And season three, I thought, was just phenomenal. I thought they they got the Covenant right, they got the battle scenes right. But for me, John or 117 or Spartan 117 or Master Chief, whatever we're going to call him, he's a lone guy. He yeah. doesn't work with a crew. So I'm sort of, I have no spoiler alerts. <laughs> I think what they did in season three makes sense. Yeah. Because I think we're going to see the best of, of, of Master Chief. And yeah, I, I am, yeah. Thank you for bringing it up because I didn't know. I, everyone else I asked, don't watch it. It's, I can't understand what? it. I'm not listening and they watch it and they just want to talk about Halo. Got me an email. More than happy to have that chat with you. Um, yeah. It, I thought they did phenomenal. Yeah, I thought it was really good. Season three, just stick with it. If you watch season two, don't go off it. Stick with it because it ties it all in. I think three and four. Three was phenomenal. I think four is yeah. going to go even further. It was just a long wait for, for season three, wasn't it? <laughs> It or was, was it season two, the wait was... Which one was the big wait in between them now? I thought it was three. I yeah, was three. I think so. I had to go back and watch the, the seasons again just to go, okay, wait, I got to recap everything. So I can't it just do an overall recap. I got to watch them all from beginning Absolutely. to end. Yeah. Tom, Absolutely. did you watch it? No. Oh, we're, I was we're, like, we're, go ahead. Go ahead. You can, you're going to have to ask him about Love Island or something like that. I think he's froze up, which is a good time because he can't answer back. Yeah, exactly. Um, we can make fun of him all he wants. And he's just sitting yeah. there smiling, casually, relaxed. Uh. Yeah. I mean, if you know Love Island, it's a, it's a group of pretty stunning-looking men and women that go to a villa, and they're kind of like just sensual, <laughs> deep kind of people, and they have text messages for challenges of each other, and they basically spend the whole time in bikinis. Um, it's, it's nice, but I won't watch that. No. Uh, but Tom's quite into it. <laughs> I think you cut me off, Kevin, when I was about to say more. <laughs> what? I don't know what happened. Oh, sorry. There was a button right there. <laughs> we weren't talking about you that short time you were gone. I promise. Unless you watch the replay and find out that we really were, then I lied. So there you go. <laughs> 
No, I think Apple is the same trap. That clearly, you guys at Halo had to watch everything again. It's like when The Walking Dead, you get the, the next new version of Walking Dead, and you think, what the hell happened at the start? So you start watching that again, and then you don't realize the program was on for about 10 years, and you've now wasted another few years of your life trying to play catch-up. So. Right. So you're a Walking Dead fan then? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. It's one of those programs, again, Brilliant marketing. You watch it from the start. You need to figure out what the hell is going to happen at the end. So you can't not make, you, you, you have to watch it. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that was – go ahead. Go ahead I, I, just for the American uh, market, and everyone else, there's, um, if, you, if you like The Walking Dead, Andrew Lincoln, wonderful. He started, pretty much started out with a, a, a TV series in the UK called Teachers where he plays a teacher and he's just – he shouldn't be a teacher. He's, he's just inappropriate, not nothing touchy kind of thing, but, but sure. funny and inappropriate. <laughs> they get into loads of different stuff. If you like Andrew Lincoln, definitely check out Teachers. I think it's pretty much free online these days. But it's Teachers, really yeah, I'm going to go check it out and see if I can find it because I, I don't know if I could watch him anything than, other than Walking Dead. And to hear, it's funny when you hear him in interviews, obviously his accent is very much there. <laughs> and then Walking Dead, he's got that raspy, you know, slow voice. And he's like, wait a minute, stop it. Messes with me completely. But if you guys are in uh, Georgia anytime soon, I know some people that live close to where um, The Walking Dead was filmed down there. So um, they can maybe get you, uh, you know, show you where that stuff at. I, um, what I was just told um, was that some of the houses that were in it, it used to be a close where you could go in for a tour of that, that town. Um, and some of the houses were actually sold. The land was sold. Um, and then the uh, person that bought it sold off the individual houses and people went in and rebuilt them and, and living in them now. So the the houses that were actually filmed as part of the set are now real houses where they're in and people are living in that. How cool would that be? I, yeah, this is the house that uh, Rick lived in. I'm in it right now. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, it, it's amazing how much money they made. And I think if it's true, I read that the reason season two was pretty much farm based was AMC cut all the budgets. It was almost going to get cancelled off or whatever else, and that's why they pretty much spent the whole season just at that farmhouse. So I think that's really look at the money they made out of that. Now it's unreal, uh, and all the spin-offs. That's cool. Yep, ab absolutely. And Megan says it's uh, it's like the Christmas Story house, but for The Walking Dead. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Is uh, you guys are familiar with the, the Christmas Story? Is that a cult classic? Uh, uh, no, I will. It's one, it's one, it's one of many. Okay, excellent. Because so I live about um, maybe not even quite thirty minute drive uh, to where they filmed that house, and they someone bought it, and then they uh, refurbished it back because someone had remodeled it and uh, made it all modern looking. And then someone bought it and put it back to the original way it was in the movies and then opened it for a museum and a tour thing. And it's, it's brilliant. It's uh, it's really cool to go and and see it. And next door where the bumpus hounds were anyway, uh, my random fact about near Northern Ohio here is uh, uh, that's where the Christmas story was filmed is right here. So there we go. It's a reason for us to come and travel and see it. What's that? That's a reason for us to come and travel and see it. We'll, there you we'll go pop over and see yeah. There you go. We can uh, just swing over to Cedar Point if you guys like roller coasters as well. It's the capital of the world, supposedly. So very good stuff. Very good stuff. All right. Hey, now I want to ask you. I, I looked at the time. I'm like, holy moly, we, we, we're talking a while. I can't believe we've, we've gone 45 minutes already. Um, but I want to ask you your top three favorite features. Um, and you might be have crossover here. They might be the same. Um, and I'm going to start with Tom this time within your software. Um, what are the three things that really benefit and can help the investigator in your opinion, the most? Um, I think number one has got to be the database. So, um, as a, as a bigger project that we'll talk about, hopefully in the future on future webinars with you, um, we have and control, um, the world's largest CSAM, I mean, media intelligence database. So we've currently got 2.5 billion records that are law enforcement records. So when we look at things like Project Vic and Cade, this is literally an evolution uh, of those technologies. Um, there is, it's not only a, a sex offenses uh, database, hence the reason why there's a lot of security around what the database can do. Uh, but at another time, we'll tell you the history and why the database was designed and, and the way it has been. Um, but that allows investigators 
to pre-categorize about 50 to 70 percent of your case automatically and it is a truly international database that's free currently for s21 customers because it's being released in stages hmm. um but it's it's phenomenal so if an investigator in australia identifies csam and then uh, an investigator in america is doing their case the flag marks, the tags, the notes, the comments, they all get shared. And uh, it's a totally offline system because we're most, we know most investigators are air-gapped. Um, but it allows you to, one, quickly preview your evidence and find the key evidence. But also if you find a file that's of interest, you've got to see who else has seen it and when. So oh, um, awesome. it is a phenomenal development that we've never seen in the world before. Um, there's nobody else trying to sort of create anything similar. Um, it is limited to the S21 software now, whilst we still build the, the capabilities and we get, get the solution working. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the nice thing, part of my job is to work with the tech firms, that we're now bridging the gap with the tech firms for tech firm data to come into that same database. So investigators eventually will be able to say these images have come from Sky or Fox News, Facebook, TikTok, whichever the, the contributing company would be, and they can all contribute their data to the system. It would allow us to have a truly international one point of contact for digital forensics. So it's awesome and it doesn't cost you a penny to use it. So or a dollar or a dime. So we have we've, we've we've created something with the support of governments to, to give back. And that is probably my favorite capability in the tool. That's very cool. That's very cool. Now I I've posted the link to your website. Um, into the chat and which it should be clickable. And I think up here on the, yeah, it's still on the screen and I'll post this down in the notes below. So if you guys want to learn more about this, you can. Um, and I just want to kind of say that as we're talking, I know people are probably searching, um, but let me slide over to, to you, Liam, with those same, same questions for you. Um, if you had favorite features or, uh, um, the best, yeah. biggest benefits. Um, uh, so I think you asked for three, I'll go for, I'll go for three for me again, find victims straight away. Um, find victims is, I believe, as near to automating victim ID uh, that we're going to get for generations, or certainly for 10, 10 plus years, because AI is going to have to start really replicating the human mind beyond what chat GPT is. Uh, find victims is where at the start of the investigation or any time during the investigation, you can click one window and it talks to you like you do an interview where it can say, hey, you know, where does your suspect or where do you think your victims could live? And you can literally have a map on screen. You just say, right, I think they could be around here. And it's okay, no problems. You know, we're only nicknames of the, the girls or the boys or anything like that, you know, names, keywords, school names, whatever you might be interested in. And it's almost like sitting and having a chat with a virtual colleague and saying, well, I know this. You know, did you go on scene? Did you take any pictures of a family photo on the wall? Yeah, I did. Well, just give me that, right? There you go. And it's one window where you talk to it you just give it very basic few minutes work and it will run hundreds of searches and in the first few seconds of the investigation will say hey right now i found these within your region i've been able to find these keyword matches and tell you where they are i've been able to find these objects you said hey my victim has a pink doll and by putting the pink doll in we've gone and found any images of the pink doll and it's it's kind of like goes from millions of images down to the ones you may want to look at first and i just think that that for me, any way of finding victims, more victims or victims faster, is for, for me always going to win. Um, yeah. So I think that was that was definitely one. And I think the other two are really geeky. Um, there's one called Auto Scroll, and if I was categorizing, I would be using it. And I hate this a little bit because it is Tom's part of Tom's idea anyway. And, <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, it, it's it's literally where you can say hey. Um, you know, I've got a million images, got a filter set, and you say, right, auto scroll. And the application will then either move pages every so many seconds, or you can have it as like a web page where it moves down. So you can keep watching, you can watch your beer or beverage of your choice, probably not beers at work, but why not? Um, and the moment something comes up that may be notable, you press spacebar, or whatever, you say, right, here's my cat one my illegal image, and you hit space when it carries on. And then we know that the majority of media is going to be non-notable material. It's going to be junk, spam, whatever else. So 
you literally can grade your case in a few clicks while sitting having a copy and that. And it even has a Netflix and chill system built in. I mean, you can't get much cooler than that, where if uh, if you leave it alone for three minutes, it basically pauses and says, hey, are you actually still here or are you paying attention to this? And you can press a button to jump back to where you were or you can carry it on. But I think one we've done recently, you said three, so I'll go for the three, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, triangulation is phenomenal. I mean, this is a CSI. I said earlier on CSI. And I wanted to talk about... I wanted to uh, talk about... Kevin, you all like this. This is very cool. Yeah. This is cool. If anyone's ever seen the CSI episode, there's an episode where they've got video being filmed of a snuff movie, a movie where a person gets killed during during the scene of it. Um, and what they do is they look through the window, and through the window they see a part of a building, and they see some other things, and they triangulate where that image was taken or video was taken based on that. Uh, it was a CSI Las Vegas episode, um, for anyone that's interested. Uh, again, I know all of them like the back of my hand. And I thought, <laughs> how the hell did we do that? You know, for victim ID, we see so many people now using anti-forensic sharing on social media. Mm -hmm. the GPS is stripped out of it. But we still see a victim. It's not always just the victim. What can we see behind them? Is there a three-pin plug on the wall to see it's a UK? Is it a two-pin? You know, we can we can pick those things out. And that's what we try and investigate. But triangulation is where you can look out the window. We say, right, we've got Tim Hutton's by a Jiffy Lube, which sounds like a sex shop, but it's not. It's a really disappointment <laughs> when you go in there as a British. Jiffy Lube to any British guy is a sex shop, okay? And I thought my wife was getting a treat when we went there, but she didn't. She got a new pair of tires. Um, and then, you know, there was something like, I think it was a Roots over the back. And we've asked her on, we, we do this, and we do our training, we say, right, type these things in. And without any internet, it triangulates, says, right, that's where we believe the image was taken. And unbelievable high degree of accuracy. So I think anything where we find more victims wins for me. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> That's amazing. I've never thought about that about Jiffy Lube. We've always just been it's Jiffy Lube. We never think twice about it, but you put it in a new perspective. It, I'll never look at it the same ever. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Jiffy Lube. <laughs> it, 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 it just look, just in case we get sponsorship. It's like I thought it was like Love Honey here in the UK. If there's any sponsorship going Love Honey, then please do send me free stuff. But uh, yeah, Jiffy Lube to me sounds like I say a sex shop. <laughs> it does now that you actually convert my brain over to that. Like I'll never see it in the same again. Like I, Jiffy Lube. Wait, they do have Lube okay, so there. Well, in all fairness, when me and when me and Liam were in Canada, and we, we saw the shop. I'm like, what the what the hell is that? It's like, that's what, why is all these guys queuing up in the cars to go there? It's like this is really strange. They're lined up out the door, literally. <laughs> <laughs> A drive through sex shop, brilliant. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. That's a wasted, wasted hire of a car, I tell you, but fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, you guys have a, uh, a a webinar coming up as well, yeah? Yes, yeah, we have the uh, webinar coming up about how we can use the tools for uh, reviewing and finding CSAM uh, quicker. So yeah, it's an, an overview, a uh, quick overview, really, because there's, there's hundreds of capabilities in the tool. Um, but we'll show you how to use your NICMEC cyber tips reports, your use the AI to, to review and find CSAM that are first generation material. Uh, the database, if people are interested, we'll show you how to use the global Bank database. So yeah, that, that'll be really good for, for a good overview if people haven't seen the product uh, as a first sort of look and feel of it. Yeah, yeah. If you guys are interested, I just put it in chat, and I'll be sure to put it in the des description um, as well, so people can easily find it. They don't have to wait till this part of the episode pops in there. They can just uh, just track it. Um, I, uh, it's it's showing on the screen now, but it's it's long, uh, plain English. But go into chat, and you'll be able to literally click it from uh, from chat. Uh, oh, Megan's reminding us. Thank you, Megan. I appreciate that. I did forgot to to say the most important part. It is uh, it's, it's Wednesday at two p.m. Um, U.S. Eastern time. So that is, what, 7 p.m. where you guys are at, I think, something like that? Yes, we'll be having more beers on the uh, <laughs> Wednesday. And so be presented. Even if it's 8 a.m., it doesn't matter. You can still have a beer. It's, it's that's, that, that's just a standard to be on cyber search. What's that? Sorry? It's 7 p.m. somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> For sure. So again, that's, uh, that's down there and the webinar is, uh, is next Wednesday. I don't know the date. I can't convert it in my head really quickly. Um, but, uh, if you're watching this in, uh, in, uh, the post, if you come across this sometime after the webinar, it doesn't matter if you miss it, it's still going to be there. We're going to put it into replay mode almost immediately. 
Um, June 19th is what Megan says. So I don't know what I do without Megan and I wouldn't ever get anything done. So June 19th, if you're watching this after June 19th, the, the webinar is still there. That exact same link that I just showed you, it'll be at that location. Uh, and you can go and just watch the, uh, the recording on it as well. Um, I forgot to also tell you, if you guys have any questions, make sure I'm, I'm not keeping a real close eye on chat. If you have any questions for Tom or Liam, uh, please feel free to ask and, uh, I'll make sure that uh, I pop it up on the screen and, uh, and, uh, they can answer your questions. But if not, um, what's another way that they can get a hold of you? Again, keep in mind that you're, if you do give away your email address, you're giving it away on YouTube, just to be clear. Uh, so I'll leave that to your discretion whether you choose to do that or not. <laughs> yeah, the, the normal contact us through the website. So it is just yeah. www.themantic21.com. Uh, contact us page. Um, yeah, don't bombard my email address. It's not difficult. <laughs> I am the only Tom in the company. Um, but uh, honestly, if, if, if people are needing help and assistance, we do. We see investigations all over the world. So if you, if you have a particular case that you're thinking, I'm just stuck, I don't know what to do next, we may be able to put you in contact with people that can help or we'll give you advice and help as well. So no, please, we're, we're definitely a friendly, hopefully approachable company. Um, we're, we're here to help you. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys haven't learned that they're friendly by by now, you're, you've missed part of the episode for sure. And, and they like Master Chief. You, you have to absolutely uh, go with these guys. <laughs> Liam, do you have anything to, to add to that for folks that are looking for help? And uh, um, no, uh, just uh, for me, just reach out. You know, even if you're not using S21, and we can help you save a kid or find a kid, or you want to just talk through your investigation and what you've got, and we can try and give you some ideas from the experience we've got from working with thousands of investigators across the world. We're not going to charge for that. Just just talk to us. And if you've got a case where you think S21 could help me save a kid, just contact us. We'll send you a copy. You know, um, not, not not for a year, but we'll certainly send you enough to, to make sure we can help out. Um, I think that's the key thing. We can, we're not a company about just money, money, money. That's not how we work. Um, and if you are a department that's paying for the software and, you know, you want to try some out, so, you know, we're not, it's not about money. We, we only you use it. You make sure you're happy with it for as long as you need it to make sure before you even dream about having to buy it. But given we're significantly cheaper than the only other alternative out there, um, even contacting us might uh, half your... Uh, half your renewal cost if they have to match us, which will always save you a few quid, which means you can put a bit more back into the budget, help yourself with mental well-being, maybe buy some new chairs, TV for the wall, something to help you guys out. You know, reinvest that money back into helping your team out. That's, that's awesome. And uh, just to prove a point, we, okay. we apparently do work okay. on X. I have I posted it up on the screen there. Someone's uh, thanking you for integrating Project Vic schema as well. So. Yeah, that's fine. Kevin, just one more thing. Just obviously yeah, said about software. I know so there's a comment about how we get free software. If you're part of the Homeland Security, if you're part of HSI Heroes through the Hero Core, reach out to us. Your licenses are totally free. Um, it's yeah. one of the initiatives that we think is absolutely amazing, that we take bets, we put them back into uh, into another career where they're making such a positive difference. They will never pay for the software. So if you are a HSI hero, reach out. Not to cost you a thing. You've got the software forever. That's very cool. That's very cool. I believe IASIS as well, Tom. We did the same. Um, yeah, the IASIS, IASIS crew. So if anyone's IASIS this year, reach out. Software's free for you for a year as well. Um, yeah. The HSI is different. They get it free forever. IASIS, you go it for a year for free. That's awesome. There's a lot of students that go through there too. Was it? Uh, you were down there the same time I was, Tom, actually. Yeah. Um, that was a yeah, massive yeah, classroom. Yeah, I can't believe how yeah. it's like 320. Is that what they said? Yeah, I think that's 350, 350 and 180 trainers. Yes. Yeah, it's it's insanity. Yeah, we were trying to measure. It's like, is this room bigger than at least a, a football stadium? And I believe the answer was it was dug on close. Um, yeah, it was that, that large. Imagine because there's like, I think it's like six big screens across the front. Uh, so you can see it's like being at a rock concert for digital forensics. It's, it was an interesting uh, scenario for sure. Yeah. Yeah, That's a no, lot of license you guys give out for that. So kudos to you guys again. So I applaud you for that. Um, and uh, just keep up the good work. And guys, don't forget, if uh, you want to learn more, 
Um, there's a webinar coming up on June 19th. I posted the link into chat. I'm going to immediately, as soon as the episode's over, I'm going to run over to the description um, and make sure that link to that webinar is there um, as well. And, uh, oh, we have someone here from the, the Hero Corp. Says, that's very cool. I'll start using it on Monday here at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, in the CID section. There you go. Awesome stuff. You guys have a fan base that's following you around. Didn't even know it. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, very cool. Liam and Tom, thank you very much for hanging out with us uh, for the last hour. I can't believe it's been an hour. It just it flew right by. Um, and guys, don't forget, to you can reach out to them. Just go to the website. Uh, again, I posted links um, to that uh, right attached to this episode. If you're on the YouTube side, um, I'll go and we'll we'll post some more stuff. If just look through our social feeds. You'll you'll definitely find uh, the episode um, for this um, elsewhere. Links back to it, and uh, the, the the webinar is going to be the real thing. So if this sparked your interest in it, uh, the webinar is going to give you that extra deeper dive uh, and to see some of the things that are that are going on um, with their software. Again, Liam, Tom, thank you guys so much. Don't go anywhere. I got to do this crazy outro music. Um, if I can find my button here. Yeah, I got to do the, the outro music. <laughs> and uh, again, thanks very much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for everyone listening as well. Thank you. Thank you.